Good evening, I'm Floyd Robertson. This is the SCTV News. Earl Cannonbear is on special assignment, and we'll be hearing a report from him later in the program. Tonight's top story, Orson Welles was reported in satisfactory condition after an incident at the Beef Galore restaurant in Hollywood. Apparently, he had just consumed 16 full-course meals and was unable to dislodge himself from the booth. Well suffered multiple cuts and contusions from the nitroglycerin used to blast him out of the cubicle. Restaurant owner Gino Marcotti was quoted as saying, quote, I still think Orson would have made it out of the booth if he hadn't drunk that gallon of Perrier water, unquote. And now I believe we're ready for that special report from Earl Cannonbear. I'm standing here, Floyd, in an old converted barn on the outskirts of Fayetteville, Arkansas. As you can see, I've disguised myself as one of the locals so as not to arouse suspicion. Hey, who, who are you talking to? Me talking? Well, I'm not talking to nobody. I was, I was just mumbling to my pal. Yeah. Hey, I'm very excited no, about these things. Wait, who are you right now? I don't know who I'm not. Not. If these people knew I was a reporter covering this event, we'd all be in a lot of trouble. The reason we're here is to cover an actual pit bull fight. Now, these fights have been taking place all across rural America for a number of years now. And the filming of such an event, of course, is strictly forbidden. This should be a television first. Uh, here come the dogs, Floyd. The dogs are coming. Oh, they're lovely looking animals. Now, they're sizing each other up. They're... Look at that, Roy. Look at that. Look like one of them microphones. One no, of them no, microphones. it's a flashlight. Microphone. Oh, Microphone. There must be a camera here somewhere. Hey, that's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, hey, you're right. Up. There it is there. There's a camera in there. Oh, my. There's a camera. There is a camera. <laughs> Why don't you show us how it works, yeah, huh? It's right, know, why don't you get down here and show us how it works? Come on, get on the show. Why don't you stop pushing? Why don't you take you know, down your pants? <laughs> That's right, boy. Take them off. Come on, boy. Take them off. Hey, Ron, I need something. What's he doing? Get, get rid of that team. Get rid of that team. Stand by remote three. Ready to New York. Ready to bring in Brinkley. Not Floyd. Brinkley. Ready to go to New York. Go to New York. And now, live via satellite from New York, David Brinkley. Cut the Brinkley. What the hell is wrong with my barber? After 17 years and over 400 haircuts, he seems to be losing his touch. Now, I don't expect perfection from anyone. And in his case, anything beyond, how are you today, Mr. Brinkley? Anything off the sides, Mr. Brinkley, is a welcome change. But I do expect at least a good haircut. And if he purports to be a barber and displays his certificate above his mirror, he should damn well behave like one. About five years ago, he had a terrible odor emanating from his sleeve. But shortly after air conditioning was added to the shop, the problem was rectified. Like any other professional, a barber has a responsibility to the public to offer quality and consistent work. Floyd? Earl? Yeah. Earl? Well, another awful report from a mediocre journalist. I'm Floyd Robertson, and that's the news. <laughs>